Well, hi everyone, my name is Paolo. Uh, short introduction, uh, I'm currently working as an R&D software engineer at Dockyard. Uh, I'm graduated in, uh, by f the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro as an electronics and computer engineer. And I'm also an NX maintainer and team member. You can find me at, at that, with that handle in basically every social media, so uh, and mainly GitHub and Twitter as well. Uh, so this is a short uh, structure of our journey now. Uh, we're gonna first look into NX tensors and how they carry data and what exactly NX backends are. And then we will see more and more of how can we use different backends and what, the, what numerical expressions are and how they enable NX to work the way it does. So, uh, as I said, NX operates on tensors, which are, uh, in a simple way, uh, multidimensional arrays of numbers, uh, matrices, vectors, scalar numbers, they are all tensors as well. And in NX, tensors have different implementations. So, we have the default implementation through bi NX binary backend, but there's also NX defend expression, EXLA backend, TorchX backend, all of those are currently in the main NX repo. But people can also build their own NX backends. So this is a ba the basic structure of an NX tensor. When we instantiate a new tensor, you see an inspect uh, close to that one, which tells you the shape, the type, and a preview of the data contained in the tensor. And this is kind of the unwrapped thing. Uh, as I said, this is the default implementation, binary backend, which stores the data inside a binary, an Erlang binary. So you can see the one, two, three that we we instantiated as a as a list. You can see it represented in the binary there. There is also other metadata, uh, which are printed pretty printed through the inspect protocol. And different backends will, sh will have wildly different shapes uh, in the data field, as we'll see a few slides forward. So, as I mentioned, different backends have different capabilities. So, the binary backend is the default implementation because it is written in pure Elixir. So, you don't need to install any C compiler or anything like that to use it. And it's really good for t validating your ideas with a smaller subset of data. And for faster execution, we have two implementations that we provide as well, EXLA and TorchX. EXLA is based on XLA, which is the TensorFlow backend. And TorchX is based on PyTorch. Both can use GPU acceleration, but EXLA ha also has the capability of compiling things down. And we'll talk about that as well forward. And finally, there's the NX DFN expression backend, which is the heart of NX. And I say that because the NX DFN expression backend is what enables us to get a Close to an AST, we get a symbolical representation of our code. And that symbolical representation will enable us to compile things, will enable us to manipulate the symbolical representation into other symbols, so we can do lots and lots of stuff. Um, yeah, so I've been talking about a, a lot of an, an X defined expression, and it's close to an AST, but it's not exactly an AST. Um, we'll, we can probably see that in, in a few slides, but the main difference is that an, an AST abstract, abstract syntactical tree has different nodes at the leaves. 
And an XDefin expression is actually actually a graph because some some leaves can be com uh, can be shared between different nodes. So uh, to start, we can look at the creation of a, an, X, an XDefin expression tensor, which is just a scalar number three in the, this case, and I've expanded the the structure without the inspect protocol so we can see the details of how, how it is represented. So we can see that the tensor has arguments, which is the, the value, and each expression has its own arguments, much like each node in the Elixir AST has their own arguments as well. Each, each node in the, the expression will have an ID which can be a ref or a, a fixed value, and an operation, in this case it's a constant. And we normally don't touch the, the public function, functions for the, the expression backend. We'll just, we're just using these to kind of get a feel uh, from the bottom up, bottom up until we reach the, the fan functions. So more on that. This is us declaring two parameters uh, with value one and two, respectively. And then we're building an expression which, which basically translates to three times y plus x. And I want to highlight that it's really, really close to the Elixir AST when you, you squint for an, uh, hard enough. Because you can see uh, the parameters, which are basically the variable declarations, and then you see the code, which which is basically li line for line the Elixir AST as well. So, yeah, you can see three times y in the left side through definite expression, and the right side to, through the Elixir AST. And this is a module, a typical module that you could write using an XDefin. So it's basically a function that uses different uh, expressions, mathematical expressions. And this is more Elixir-like. We don't need to touch tensor and parameter and declare things explicitly. But notice that we're importing an XDefin and using DefN and DefNP declarations. So DefN and DefNP will rewrite the Elixir kernel using an, the NX DefN kernel instead. So when it, we see the, the addition operator, it's like actually an X set that's been, call, call, that's been called insta, instead of the kernel addition operation. The same with the exponent operator as well. And this is... Uh, what, ha what happens when we pass, uh, pass tensors into our exponents function. We get an expression which is being inspected through the print exp uh, call at the end, so we can see what the expression is actually like. And we get the value as well. So we're getting 23 as an, an output. But most importantly, we can see the, the symbolical representation of the code that is being executed. And we can also see that the C node, which is being defined here, appears both in the D expression and the E expression. And that's the difference from the expression backend to a simple AST. It's the same node, the same exact, exact node, and not the same value much like when you reference a variable in, in Elixir. So, now we know how, how to build an XFN expressions, but we've only seen one use of those, which is to kind of build code in an easier way. But there are different usages as well. Um, as I mentioned, EXLA provides a, a separate compiler. And we can also look into automatic differentiation of mathematical expressions. 
Um, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, for EXLA, what happens is that we, have, we feed that symbolical representation into XLA, which will then convert the, the computation gra graph into a specific up computation for a given device. So it can compile the code for the GPU. It can compile the code for the CPU. And, you, and then you have lots of optimizations that TensorFlow also leverages. And we can leverage them as well through Elixir via XLA. And the XLA, EXLA backend module, which is a, a backend that you, you can use for runtime test, testing and validation instead of needing to compile the code, is just a just-in-time compilation of this whole process. So it builds a definite expression, compiles to the CPU, for instance, and then it ex executes at the same time. Um, I want to look into autodiff or grad, automatic differentiation, because um, it's a way that we can see how we can turn, into, turn a given symbolical representation into another one, instead of just manipulating numbers. Um, this process is really important for machine learning, because normally machine learning will use uh, some form of derivative of derivatives to uh, calculate the error functions and, and improve the, the values fitted to a given test input. And the important thing is that we can perform those symbolically and not numerically. So uh, this is what we're going to look into for the next two or three slides. Um, we can see that. Uh, there's the, this derivative definition, mathematical definition. Just focus on G, which is the current derivative accumulated so far. And know that the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. It's another function. So this code is just us defining a sine function, performing the numerical derivative which is basically you subtracting one, one sample uh, from the following one and dividing for, by the step. And there's also the theor theoretical value, which is the, just the cosine of x as we, we have defined here. And this graph shows that they are basically the same. The blue line is the sine of x, and the red line is the theoretical value while the dashed black, line, dashed black line is the calculated value. So at first, we could think that we wouldn't need symbolical representation. We could just apply the numerical dif differentiation. However, it's important for us to think that uh, whenever we go through this process, we, we lose a sample. And if we go more and more and more, we're losing more and more samples. So we're kind of losing data. And that doesn't perform really well with uh, many iterations. The symbolical, symbolical iteration, on the other hand, will not, we will not touch any data. It will just manipulate the expressions. And then afterwards, will apply the data to get a value in the end. So yeah, this is an excerpt of the, the GRAD module, just to, to show that it's exactly what we're looking before. Uh, we have a gradient that's accumulated. To get in more technical terms, uh, we're applying the chain rule here. So we, we apply the derivative from out, outwards in, until the the, mo the innermost level. And G is the currently accumulated grad. And then we just multiply G by the, the current node's derivative. And we have lots and lots of these different definitions 
in the next grad module, which allows us to differentiate most, uh, not all, but most of the NX functions that we, we can use. Um, another example, I've just provided two functions here, which will translate into an X and see what happens. So we have this first polynomial. <coughs> Sorry. We have this first polynomial and its derivative. Uh, just wait a second, I have to get some water. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so uh, this is just us defining the same functions with defn. And one of the beauty, beautiful things is that it's just uh, almost a line for, line for line translation. So we have the original function, and then we perform the derivative. And we also are creating the, the symbolical representation so we can see what's happening. And here it is. When we call f prime with two as an input, we get basically this is exact definition. We're getting x to the power of four multiplied by five, and then we will subtract 38. And as we expect, the answer is 42. Um, yeah, so I hope that this shows a bit more into how important definite expression is and sheds a bit of light into how, how DFN works. Um, and yeah, different backends can provide really, really different functionality. We, we saw how EXLA compiles for different devices, but also how DFN expression will provide the, the backbone for how NX works. And there are other applications built on top of that. For instance, Axon, which is the neural networks library. It doesn't care about what the backend is. It just works, provided that the backend is fully compatible, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we can also, for instance, take uh, a DFN expression, and Quinn, who is at the audience right now, uh, took a DFN expression and converted it to Latex. Which, which is really cool. And there are other backends in the community, for instance, a vision, which binds OpenCV, but has a compatibility layer for NX as well. And Pelame, which aims to compile for, for native code as well, but through other processes. So thanks for, for your presence here. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much. Um, all right, do we have any questions from folks in the room? Several. Right, I'm gonna start back here. So in practice, if we wanted to implement a backend, what would we have to do? Right, so there's this module called an X backend, which provides all the callbacks for a behavior that you have to implement. So I'd recommend just looking into all the callbacks you have to implement as well as using the binary backend or one of the other BXLA. Uh, probably TorchX would be more practical to look into because the XLA is more metaprogrammed. But you, you can use those as, as example implementations. Thank you. All right, another question. Hey, man, nice talk. Uh, like I've been studying in X for like a year right now, and something that I saw like you talk is like about those backends and like something I wanted to know is like what we win like choosing a different backend for example, and also if there is uh, like comparisons on PyTorch, uh, sorry, Torch X <laughs> and the XLA and, and on their performances and things like this. Yeah, so there are lots of different reasons. For instance, uh, a vision, which I mentioned uh, second to last, 
it, it's a library that binds OpenCV. So if you want to do image processing, you can use a vision purely. But if you want to interface with NX, it, it also provides some of the NX operations. And, you, and the, especially the, one of the functions is the backend transfer function, backend copy as well, which lets you ch change from one backend to another. So you're, for instance, loading your image and doing some pre-processing in OpenCV, then you can load it into YXLA and perform some classification through Exxon, for instance. Thank you. Any other questions? I think we have any from the folks online. Let me double Oh, I think there was, there was a second sub-question there, right, right? The comparison between PyTorch versus XLA. Uh, I don't recall us doing a formal benchmark, but for sure there are some differences be because um, some of the, the verbs each library provides are different. For instance, NX has the gather function, with, which lets you index randomly into a tensor. And it behaves in a way for the binary backend. In a similar way for the EXLA backend, but for the TorchX backend, it, it behaves in a totally different way, which, which is closer to take a long axis. So we had to like do some um, higher level manipulation to get it into the same uh, results. On the other hand, some, some other functionality is worse in EXLA, but better in TorchX. So it will really depend on what you're doing. Thank you, Paolo. All right, any other questions before we wrap up? Okay, thank you all. Um, we have a bit of a break. Our next talk in this room is actually at 3.30, but before then, we'll please get a round of applause for NX Backends, our deep dive. Thank you very much.